Today, I will go where few players have ever gone before. The world border in Minecraft. It's 30 million blocks away, which takes 30 to 40 hours of nether travel and hundreds of elytra. But I've invented a new contraption that literally slows down time in Minecraft and makes this whole task much, much easier and much, much cheaper. And I also make another massive perimeter, a super OP obsidian farm, and another way for me to teleport millions of blocks in an instant. The first thing you're probably wondering is just how much ancient debris did the world eater get me? Well, we're now about to find out. So this is my perimeter. I'll turn on the chunk borders and then systematically collect up the ancient debris chunk by chunk. Slowly work my way across and I'm on one and a half stacks so far. Now two stacks. With this, I've got three stacks. And that is the grand total. Three and a half stacks from all of this it uh it doesn't sound like much does it although the main use of this perimeter was not to get loads and loads of ancient debris no this massive massive hole will allow me to go to the world border but to do that i'll first need to get rid of this entire machine and i've also realized that i had some more ancient debris that i was mined up as the machine was going in this so i actually got six stacks over six stacks from the world eater which is, is a bit better than what it was before there's also something extremely satisfying about mining up a massive contraption like this i've made a bit of progress on breaking it all but to be honest with you it is taking forever i uh I might invest in some TNT. My elytra are also nearly broken, my pickaxe as well, and my shovel. I think I'm gonna go and get a load of XP. And that way everything can get fully healed up. Now that that's all done, I can offload these items into chests, smelt the ancient debris, then combine them to make ingots over a stack and a half. That feels like so many. But turn those into blocks, and we've got we've got eleven. All of that. For 11 blocks. This really is one of the biggest projects that I've ever tried. But hey, we're, uh, we're another step closer. Enough of that never-ending project. Let's get to the world border. Although before I go world border hunting, I thought I could first do a little bit of not chapel hunting. Here's dungeon number one. With a notch. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, that's... Uh, actually, it's so close to my house. I've only gone like four, five hundred blocks away. Let's get another one. I really think this is my best ever method for finding them though. Now for the second dungeon, this time it's a, it's a little bit more realistic. Let's keep searching. Nothing in dungeon number three. Same at the fourth. Fifth is also empty. The sixth somehow flew over a monument and got mining fatigue, which means I really need to find a cow on this little island. Ah, I found a whole herd of them. Now to make a bucket, get some milk. Yeah, that could have been a disaster. I'll take another bucket of milk for the road. Now to get back to searching dungeons and finding nothing. Emptiness is in dungeon eight, nothing in nine. Ten though, haha, <laughs> well, very nice indeed. Look at that, we've already got two, that's that's perfect. I was actually lined up to say that ten was terrible, you know, my little alliteration theme. But two notch apples in that short of a time is very successful indeed. I also just got mining fatigue again, I don't know where from. That's why I brought another bucket of milk. Now we're gonna need three things to make it to the world border. Also that's 27 notch apples altogether. The first of the three is more elytra. The second thing that I'll need is more time because it's gonna take ages and ages to get to the world border and I've already lost like 20 days in this episode. You'll have to wait and see how I'm literally going to freeze time in my world. And then the final thing will be a way to get back, otherwise I'm just gonna be trapped to the world border, it's gonna take me forever to get back. So first things first, I'm going to begin by getting more elytra. Turns out I've already been here. That's, um, that's not good at all. Although I did leave some gold behind, so that's something. Will this end city be any better? Yes, indeed it will. Here we have the second one. The third is up ahead. There we go. Now I have five elytra in total. And now I've got eight in total. I'm just going to get one more. Although since I'm a little bit paranoid and haven't completely done the calculations of how many elytra I actually need, whilst I will have 10 in total, I'm just going to get a few more. Because running out of elytra is basically the only thing that could go wrong with this entire plan. Well, Technically, a lot of things could go wrong. But that's the one that worries me the most. And so now I have got 18 elytra. <laughs> that's got to be enough. It is kind of crazy just how fast you can get more elytra when you can literally fly. All of these can go in the shulker box. Then I'll buy some emeralds, a load of unbreaking, and then add it to the elytra. This is definitely a great way to go through all of your levels. And since this guy doesn't look like he's going to restock anytime soon, I will buy the rest from you, good sir. And with that, every single one has unbreaking three on it. It looks very nice indeed, doesn't it? So mission successful to get plenty of elytra. Apparently, I have a, an elytra to right there as well. Next job, continue getting rid of this world eater. Only this time I'm going to speed things up with TNT. Will it actually help? I have no idea, but what it will do is make everything much, much more fun. And you get the 100% of the drop from TNT, so it's not like I'm losing anything either. Well, I have to say, it's been much, much faster using TNT, and then just going along the bottom and grabbing all of the items before they despawn. And for this lower part, I can reach it from down here, which makes life easier. Although it's still better to go ahead and use the TNT. Would you look at that? I missed a piece of ancient debris. I don't know how it didn't jam up the entire machine. Must have got kind of lucky and it like snuck on through. Well, that's just great. I'm also not using TNT on this part because if any of that scaffolding breaks, the whole lot will break above it and it'd just be too much of a 
disaster. And finally, every single block on this side of the machine is gone. It is really good that with this machine, I get every single block back, since all of these resources are going to be very, very useful. And it also means that I can repair this instant wire that I had to break last episode. Yeah, in order to finish that world eater, I took resources from everywhere that I could find them. Next, let's sort all of these items into chests. And now it's time to remove this side of the machine. That is mission accomplished. Now to grab these stray bits of ancient debris. And there's quite a few of them lurking around. Get rid of all of these items. And there sure is a lot of them. Smelt more of this ancient debris. With that, I can make a few more ingots. Next, I'll grab a bunch of gravel and then patch up this lava. I quickly realized that adding gravel all the way along here would just be a massive waste of time. So instead, I made it look nice with this little too high gravel border. And then I also did the exact same thing on this side. And after that, I removed every single spawnable block down here. So... You can see there are pieces of netherrack, but nothing can spawn on top of these ones. So that this is completely spawn proof, mobs cannot spawn on bedrock. I did it chunk by chunk, and all that's left to do is this end row of chunks right here. Because I didn't TNT this section, there's a bit more work to be done with the mining. And there we go, mission accomplished. It is now only bedrock all along here, and technically nothing should be able to spawn. And to test that out, I'm going to stand right in the middle of this place, which is here. I put down an ender chest, nothing to be able to spawn. Then I'm going to reload the world to turn off the mob switch. So far, so good. According to the F3 menu, zero mobs have spawned, which means we can now begin phase two. Create a farm that will literally allow me to slow down time. I designed this one myself, and it's going to require a lot of magma and also a lot of obsidian, although we, <laughs> we don't really have much of that. And whilst my current obsidian farm is kind of decent, there is a way to make a much, much much better one. It's going to require a lot of items and also a wither, but once it's complete, it'll get me 32,000 obsidian per hour. Every item that I need is right here, so let's head to the end so that we can start building this thing. First things first, I need space around this obsidian platform. It, it's trapped, it, so I need to go mine loads and loads of endstone. Even with haste 2, efficiency 5, this will still take a while. Mining out all this endstone was a lot more effort than I thought it was going to be. I've got loads of endstone here, I've got loads in one of the shulker boxes, loads in the double chest, but I still want to mine out one more layer down here and also two layers on this side and that is also now all gone i'm going to take as much of the end stone as i can and add it to my chest room and you know what i'll grab all the rest of the end stone some of it needs to go in the shulker box mine up these hoppers and also the chests and add these to the chest room as well i've gone from no end stone to loads of end stone and the next issue i have in this area is those guys if i don't do something to get rid of those then the wither will start shooting them and, and everything could just go wrong so it's time to spawn proof the area the whole area is looking much much better I don't think I need to spawn proof anymore. Time to grab some glass and begin building. Also, when I was spawn proofing the nether perimeter, my silk touch pickaxe did break and I need to kind of break some glass. I don't have a silk touch pickaxe. You know what? I'm, I'm just going to go and get another one. Since all I need to make one is three diamonds, two sticks and a bunch of books. Perfect. That's now fully done. I used some of the precious ancient debris to upgrade it to netherite and now I can mine up the precious glass. I literally could have just used this silk touch shovel, but you know what? We needed the new pickaxe. Now to finish these glass platforms, which are going to have borders around them. Next, I want another glass platform down here, which is going to have the chests and the hoppers that will collect up all of that obsidian. And this platform right here will have bubble columns on it, which will deflect the wither shots. These stairs around it are all going to be waterlogged. And this little mini cage right here is going to hold an iron golem. I think if I break... Oh, I did not mean to hit you. Hey, don't get mad at me. That's it. Be nice. Anyway, that's where he's going to live for the rest of his life. It's a good thing that golems that you create will not attack you. Now to create the cobblestone generator that will absorb all of the wither's attacks. And that is the generator complete. Complete. We're going to place some blocks over the top of that as well. And right here we have the mechanism that will push that cobblestone down on a nice little clock. And you can see if I just go ahead and let's say break one, it will refill like that. Now to create the system that will protect the golem from the wither shots, which is done by placing loads and loads of kelp and then breaking it all. Next I need water on all of these sides. Now to create the snow golem system that will make the wither keep breaking the obsidian. Unfortunately all of this from my old obsidian farm is, is useless and it's, it's just got to go. Oh my god, there's so many random items. Then all of this needs mining up under here. The snow golem's gonna go right here. Now don't, don't hurt yourself, but may <laughs> I love how his head's just missing. Next I'll remove the rails, now there's no escape. Now I'm gonna place something for the snow golem to throw snowballs at. I want to say play something, I mean I'm going to lure something up here. And this right here shall be my victim. Never mind, he uh, <laughs> seems he fell in the lava. Instead, this guy shall be my victim. Through the portal, he will hopefully go. Of course, you might have to get trapped down a hole. All right, let's uh, let's get you out of here. Now he's in there and I can name tag him. And this right here will be my on-off switch. Because now this fella is throwing his snowballs. And I've already got a chunk loader over here, which I think should be fine. I, it is one chunk away, which should be close enough. And so now I can create the wither cage. At least I could if I hadn't left the shulker boxes in the stronghold. Since a lot of these items are going to be very... 
very important. There needs to be a stone cutter here and a grindstone at the top, which are what will hold the wither in place and actually trap it without it being able to break the blocks above its head. All right, time for the moment of truth. If I screw this bit up, everything is messed up. We just need a little bit of water above his head like that and to fly far, far away. Now then, looking from a distance, he is going after the iron golem. You can see he's not hurting him. I think everything's working fine. Pathetic. Can't even break my cobblestone wall. Now for another risky bit, but I'm going to remove that water and fix me broken torches. Then I'll return to the stronghold, click this lever and switch on the chunk loader. And now when I go through, the snowball should be hitting the wither. Let's be careful. There we go. We got a little bit hit, but we, we should... Okay, he's attacking me. I've just got to be a little bit... Let's just move on. Go for the golem, not me. What on earth? He got out. What? How is that even possible? That's not meant to work there. Oh my god. You know what? This is this is a disaster. Now I've got to go ahead and battle a wither. All right, wither. I'm not sure how you escaped or where I went wrong, but you're going down. Seriously, I spent all day building this farm and you had to ruin it for me. So now I'm going to ruin you. At least on the positive, I've got another nether star. And it's time for me to work out what on earth went wrong there. Because look, this snowball's coming through. Whoa, okay. That, that, <laughs> I'm just trying to look here, Enderman. Yeah, I've, I've no idea what I did wrong. But let's repair the golem. Head all the way to the fortress farm so that I can spawn another wither. Yeah, everything I need is in here. Now I will attempt once again to make this farm work. Except this time I have an extra plan. Grab a bit of invisibility. Then when I drink it, and yes, this bit is kind of risky, but in theory, I should be able to sneak through undetected. Okay, did I did I sneak through undetected? Just fly away, SP. Oh my goodness, again? Just let me quickly deal with this fella, guys. There we go, no problem at all. Now to spawn yet another wither. But this time I'm not gonna remove the water until I've activated the snowballs. And here we go again. All right, did we get out? Come on, tell me he's still in there. You know what, I think he is. Now to drink an invisibility and watch the magic happen. He removed the water himself. I, would, I guess that was where I was going wrong. The golem is the bravest guy in the world. And I just need to repair some of the glass. Because all of my obsidian is... Uh it's blowing away. And now that all of that is fixed, this farm, it gets you a ridiculous amount of obsidian. Look at all of this. I've got stacks and stacks already. Because I kind of had to patch that up with random stone, I'm going to mine up some of this glass so that I could use that to fix it. It's already got me a ridiculous amount, so I'm just going to spend 10, 15 minutes AFK here, see how much we get. Well, it did not take me long to overflow these chests in the middle and pretty much fill up the side ones as well. So now I'll nip back home, grab some shulker boxes, make them all purple, and hopefully when I head through here, everything is, is kind of Okay, no, he's escaped. Let's get rid of wither number three. Although I have got into a sticky situation where I'm out of firework rockets, I'm out of food. I managed to quickly get a totem out of uh, the shulker box I placed over here. I've got to try and grab two more shulker boxes. Okay, that, that should be enough. Could have grabbed a notch apple if I thought I was in serious danger. But hopefully eating. Oh yeah, we're regening, we're good. Might as well have a quick golden apple as well. And I accidentally grabbed the wrong bow. Not my infinity one, which is a bit stupid. I'm out of arrows. So it's time to fight this guy by flying into him. Oh, you know what? I've got a better idea. Just go back home, grab more arrows, and then finish the job. Yeah, that was certainly a much simpler method. No need to panic, but I am now completely out of totems. Although they can easily be replenished at the raid farm. And now I can bring back all of this obsidian. Every single bit of obsidian has been collected. And all of these shulker boxes are full. Look at them all. Over 17,000 obsidian sat in all of that. Much better than any other obsidian farm I've ever had. And I guess now it's time to build the farm that will slow down time. I can't really complain that I haven't got enough obsidian anymore. Although before that, a lot of my items need repairing. So I shall spend a few moments at the pigman farm doing that. One of the next things that I'm going to need to create the machine that will slow down time is a load of turtle eggs. I did at one point have loads of turtle eggs, but I, I kind of got rid of all the turtles that would get me them. So I'll grab a bunch of seagrass. And there's also a load more of that in this chest here. Yeah, when I say a load more, and some turtle eggs, perfect. And then I will fly far, far away, breed any turtles that I can find, and then steal their eggs. And I can even find ruined portals on the way, which pretty much have nothing useful in them. A few more turtles over here. And if I can lure this one from the water and breed these two, that'll give me a few more eggs to go at. This gets me up to eight eggs in total. Now I've got a total of 10 eggs. Here's something that I didn't realize before. Once a turtle has just laid an egg, you can immediately breed it again straight away. So it's actually very, very easy to get lots and lots of turtle eggs very, very fast. In that case, I'm going to leave these turtles, head back home, and get loads of eggs from the turtles that are in here. I've got the 32 eggs I needed, so I'll just leave these other ones to hatch. I've also got another beehive that can go in here. And I am going to need more magma, but I've managed to run out of shulker boxes. Probably because I filled them all with netherrack. And for some reason the shulker in here has died, which means this shulker shell farm is currently useless. Although, I tell you what, there's nine there, 18 there, nine shulker boxes. I'll worry about fixing that farm some other time. Now to make some shulker boxes, make fire resistance, and now to mine lots of magma. Look at that, bit of ancient 
ammunition debris as well. And with almost two full shulker boxes worth, I think I've got enough. I'll also need lots and lots of glass, as well as trap doors. And of course, obsidian. I didn't build that massive farm for nothing. Now that I've got everything for the farm, let's fly to the perimeter. And now using the F3 menu, I've got to find the nether waste part of this perimeter. And so right here is where we shall start the build. I'm just kind of marking out the area. So this is the magma platform that the pigmen will spawn. Then we've got a portal here, and then another nine magma along. Another portal, a row of glass, another row of glass, which will have the turtle eggs on top of it, protected by trap doors and glass in between. Are you kidding me? I <laughs> just smashed an egg. Now I've got to fly all the way home, get some more eggs, and then go back to the nether and get back to work. This portal is going to be five high in total and 15 wide. If I was to make it any wider and try and make this farm bigger, then there'd be problems with the portals not linking correctly. They go to new ones. So this is like the max width and length that I can do it. And now I'd like to make these magma platforms a lot bigger. And so that is all the magma down on this side, but that is only half of the floor plan. Yeah, I've got to now repeat it all over here. And so that is this bottom layer done. I need some obsidian here as well otherwise the portal will be too wide and you won't be able to light it let's add in the rest of the eggs and trap doors and i need to make sure there's still two air blocks above the eggs otherwise the pigment won't go for them so we're going to do something like this and add one more layer of trap doors to 100 percent make sure no mobs can get to the eggs. That's all done. So now I'm going to add another magma spawning platform. That is all now placed down. And it's made me realize that to finish the entire farm, I, I will need a little bit more magma. But before I do that, I'm going to add in some glass walls. And now that's all done. I'm going to place glass all the way along here. And the same thing on this side. And finally, another row up here. And that is where the next batch of turtle eggs will go. But after placing all of this glass, I realize I'm also not going to have enough of that to build another two layers of this. So I'm going to head back, grab more fire resistance, repair my pickaxe, mine a load of sand so that I can get more glass and I'll also mine up lots and lots more magma. I do actually have a magma cube farm somewhere over in this direction so I wonder if this has got me a load of magma cream I could just use. Let's see how much we're gonna get. It's definitely faster for me to just mine it but it has been a nice little boost. I think all of this and all in that sugar box should be enough although we'll just grab a little bit more from here and now I'll definitely have enough and the smelted glass is filtering through and whilst I'm waiting on that I have got an idea if I grab some black dye and mine up this sugar box and instead change it to be black I think it just blends in with the wall a bit better than being a bright orange one. All of this this will definitely be enough. And so now it's time to build another two layers of this farm. And I have now run out of glass, but the farm is very, very close to being complete. As you can see, I spawn proof the obsidian with glass as well, so nothing spawns on there. Now all I need to do is mine up some sand. That way I can get more glass, and then I can finish building this. The glass I'm placing here is what will stop gas from spawning. And now it's time to activate the portals. I'm going to light this portal, and then fly to the corresponding coordinates on the other side. Although I think it's just going to be faster for me to go through this portal. Break this one, and then build another portal in the correct place. Let's light it and see if it's connected. So far, so good. And I'm going to test every single portal individually to make sure they're all linked correctly. This is the last portal to link. It bases on the portal blocks as well, so if you're on this edge one, you could go to a different portal to being towards the middle. They've all linked up absolutely fine. If I made this farm any longer or any wider, then linking problems would happen, so this is the why it's the size I've made it. Next, I'm going to go to this AFK spot and build a tower with stone bricks up to the bedrock, which will have ladders on the side. And don't be deceived, this tower is going to be crucial for me being able to get to the world border. And now to fly all the way over here, go up above the bedrock and start destroying a bedrock hole right here. This is a very consistent way to break bedrock, as you can see. When I mine the piston, the bedrock is gone. And now to do it about 50 more times. Now all the bedrock pieces that need to re be removed have been taken away. This right here will be very, very useful later on. And whilst I'm up here, I might as well work on the chunk loader as well. It's going to be a pretty straightforward chunk loader. You've seen me do it quite a lot of times. Only this one won't use a comparator to detect every time that a item comes through. Instead, it'll just be attached to a clock that keeps going off. That way, it's got less chance of breaking. Because if this breaks at the wrong time, then... Uh, <laughs> It will be a disaster. So when I flick this lever, it will send a little pulse that will go around and items will go through these droppers. So if I go ahead and just fill this up with a bunch of random items, let's go stone bricks. You'll see that the stone bricks are getting dispensed and they will go through the portal. Although I will need to activate the portal and make one on the other side for that to work. So let's dig our way out of this cave. And even when I build a portal in a random place, I... Still see evidence that I've been here before. I think that's when I transported the pandas. No matter where I go, I always find some familiar place. This is where the other portal needs to be. And with that, we should have a fully working chunk loader. Although I am losing all the nuggets over there. I should, uh, <laughs> should put something to block them, shouldn't I? Let's now light it up. Add some nuggets to this side. And hopefully it will work both ways now. Seems to be working fine. I'll just spawn proof the top of this portal. And that brings me yet another step closer to going to the world border. But there's one very, very important problem. Before any of that, I need to add the other side of the pigment 
Diamond Farm. And this is basically the part that is going to literally slow down time. It's going to be trapdoors here and also here and on top of these as well. I'll add a couple of turtle eggs in here, which will be very well protected. Nothing's getting in there. And nothing's getting in here either. And so the pigmen will walk down this chute and into this hole. And that is where these vines come in. The pigmen will try and climb on these vines, which will disable entity cramming, meaning we can get millions and millions of pigmen in here. And that is exactly what will slow down time. Probably a little complicated. It's because I built a terrible creeper farm that's super laggy that I realized I could use it to slow down time if I kind of tweaked it a bit and used pigmen instead. But discovering this very interesting mechanic is literally going to be the reason why I can get to the world border. So the farm that slows down time is ready. The chunk loader can be turned on any time. So I'm almost ready to go to the world border. But there is still one problem. And it would be quite a big problem really if I, if I didn't solve it. When I go to the world border, I'm going to be 30 million blocks away. So I feel like it's probably pretty important that I, I have some sort of way to get back. Otherwise, I'd have to make a very, very long journey home. And to do this, I'm going to use a really simple variation of wireless redstone that I've never used before. Super, super simple. Basically, if you sleep, then you get teleported back. So I'm just going to build one at spawn. If I go to sleep at the world border, I'll come back instantly. The plan is completely foolproof. But before I do that, I'm going to repair my items. So in order to build this particular wireless redstone, we're not going to need very many items at all. Just a few repeaters, a bunch of redstone, composters, and comparators. So let's now head over to spawn and build this teleporting device. As you can see, the redstone's pretty simple and it's all set up. Once I place this trap door and remove the kelp, the stasis chamber will be done. The final thing for me to do is fly over here, grab some melons, and then fill these composters up a few layers. This one six layers and this one five. Now to throw in an ender pearl and travel really far away so I can test it. I'll offload all these items first, grab a chest and plenty of pearls so that that one will never run out. And now to go a very, very long distance away. I've come all the way to the fortress farm, which will be good for getting more bone meal and coal. But more importantly, if I go through here, for some reason it's taking me to a lush cave, which is interesting. And in theory, if I, if I sleep, I would teleport back, but being the idiot that I am, I left it a little bit too late. So instead, I'm going to spend a bit of time exploring this area. One of the most useful things about these lush caves is the amount of clay that you can get, because normally it's kind of annoying to find. And underneath the clay, I've discovered a diamond. No, two diamonds. It is so, so easy to get clay here. Like, like, look at the amount of it here. Swamps are the next best thing, but these are way, way better. And I think I'm happy with all of the clay that I've got. I'll grab a load of moss blocks whilst I'm here. According to my clock, it is now night time. Let's go to sleep and... Uh, <laughs> see what happens. So as soon as I wake up, in theory, yes, it's teleported. I've lost my bed actually, but it did work. That is the main thing. We can go to the world border and actually be able to get back, which was my main concern. Let's reset the stasis chamber. Although actually I'm going to leave it for now in case I want to sleep. I'll, I'll do it just before I set off. I'd rather not go to sleep and randomly end up at spawn when I don't want to be. I also don't currently have a clay chest, so I'm going to add one here. The stocks are certainly looking much, much healthier. And I can also top up these furnaces with coal. And for my next thing, I'm going to build a perimeter in the overworld. It took me hundreds of days to build one in the nether, but trust me, it won't take anywhere near as long with this. Everything that I need is right here, and I know just the place for this perimeter as well. So I think this area around here is a pretty flat one, should work perfectly. Well, I just realized I forgot something. Sponge will be very handy, because my plan is also to drain a bit of this river as well. This is so, so much easier than draining the lava was. I literally just play sponge and... Okay, well, that wasn't very good, but you get, you get the idea. A bit of sponge and it's all gone. The fact that scaffolding can be waterlogged kind of makes this not work as well. Instead, it's much easier to just place a load of gravel using this method, where the piston will just keep going in and out, and I just keep placing it. Yep, this is working much, much better this time. Progress is going pretty well. As you can see, I have drained so, so much of the river. It looks really surreal. I might get rid of that little section as well. I just kind of couldn't be bothered to do it. I don't know if I need to. And I've just got this bit along here to do. And that is this part of the river completely drained. I also need to drain a little bit of this river. That's all of that drained. And it looks really good because it kind of connects up to the other one so it goes really far. You know what? I'm just going to drain this bit as well. It won't take me very long at all. And this bit of river is also completely drained as well now. Now to dry all of my sponge, remove the lava, a bit more water, and also get rid of these trees. And the final thing I want to do is make sure there's no land above y equals 70. That way I don't have to worry about the TNT bouncing back up and breaking the machine. First things first, we're going to build a little TNT duper using the coral. And the same thing on this block as well. And also need a detector rail with a minecart there. Okay, that I did that wrong. I did that very wrong indeed. What a disaster that was. <laughs> I'm not sure what I did wrong though, but I think it was having the coral fan there. No, okay, I don't, I don't know. Something, something's not right. I think the problem is that you're meant to push the minecart on with pistons rather than place it. So if I instead do something like this, 
There we go, it's not blown up. And now to rebuild this side. Both of those are now properly set up. And now to add all the other redstone on top. And this side of the machine is now ready. So now I have to fly all the way to the other side of the perimeter. And this is where I'll build a system that will send it back along. And to correspond with the observers on that side, there's going to be a slime block here and one here. The pistons are also in place, so I just need redstone and glowstone on top of these like so. And now the flying machine is done, which means all I need to do now is test it out. In order to start the machine, I just simply break this redstone block and as you can see everything starts moving and it looks like it's working. Worked really hard to get this river completely drained and now it's just getting blown up. I gave the machine plenty of height as well so that there's no chance that it's accidentally going to get blown up. You can see it's TNT flying about but it's, it's out of harm's way and so far it all looks absolutely fine. But now for the moment of truth. Will it go back the way it came? Oh look at that. It's worked perfectly. This design is by Razeworks and it really is a great little machine. I only have to add a redstone block here and it will stop when the machine gets to the other side. What I will have to do while the machine is running is just be going around and removing any water that I see. This machine on its own could do the entire perimeter but it would take hours and hours and hours for it to go all the way along I'm I'm talking like 16 hours so instead I'll go two chunks along and build eight of these in total and this one is now also done uh oh I, I made a mistake <laughs> I think I, I in breaking the scaffolding because it was touching the TNT yeah okay I, I've learned my lesson with that one so rule number one when you're adding your scaffolding don't have it touching the TNT. Anyway, the TNT's back in. This side completely finished. Now to add the return pad. And that has successfully been built as well. Now to build the third one. That's the third one complete. And that is seven of them now complete. And these phantom... Okay, hold on. Something went wrong there because these phantoms distracted me. Now this side is complete. With one final machine to go. The rain has stopped. This side is finished. The phantoms are in trouble. After a long night, everything is coming together. The return pad is also now complete. Which can mean only one thing. It is time to remove these redstone blocks and create the perimeter. Apparently this one right here somehow broke, but I can easily fix it when it gets back to this side. In the meantime, I'm going to be looking for water and lava so that I can remove it from the trenches. I think the repair job is now complete. So this machine can too be set off to destroy the world. And there's a decent patch of water here, so I'm going to get my sponge out. Probably not a good idea considering there's about to be TNT on my head, so I better hurry. A little bit more water in here. This is basically what I'm going to be doing. Looking for water, looking for lava, which is a little bit more annoying if it's an actual source. Oh, this is just a single one, so it's pretty easy. But this one in here will be a little bit more challenging. I actually need scaffolding to get rid of it. Although this lava over here is one that needs dealing with quite quickly. And with scaffolding, it just couldn't be easier, could it? Look how fast I've done that. Well, it's quite a scary thing when you see it come every time. I'm, when I'm here, it's always coming above me, isn't it? Made it just in the nick of time. Let's keep getting rid of the water and lava. This is another decent sized lake. And I don't know if I'll have time to fully finish this one. Actually, if the TNT is going the other way, I might be okay. Hey, well, there's nothing like a healthy bit of pressure of uh, TNT coming towards you. Seems to be making me pretty successful. I wonder if I'm biting off a bit more than I can chew here with the amount of like water and lava I'll have to clear out in like a, a short space of time. But I think I'm keeping up with the machine. It's when you get things like ruined portals where you have to break the obsidian. That's going to be annoying. Had to put this netherite efficiency 5 pickaxe to good use. Imagine if the chest down here got blown up, but it actually had a notch apple in it and the, and the notch apple burnt. That would be a very sad moment. I guess we'll never know. Although what we will know is that all of this lava is now gone. Not a good day to be a glow squid at the bottom of a cave. Found another decent sized lava lake. You really have to act fast when you find these. You know, I think I'm doing a pretty good job at keeping up with all this. Although having said that, there is a lot of water in this area that has got to go. Although you think it's a lot of water. It turns out it's just like one or two sources. But with it all being blown up, it just keeps flowing and flowing. And that creates obsidian, which is something that you definitely don't want. To be honest, when you've created a nether perimeter, doing a normal one like this is just so, so much easier. And this is what happens when you get your timings wrong and uh, the TNT comes to blow up all of your scaffolding. I suppose it could have been worse. And at this point, I'm just going to stop all of the machines so that I can catch up properly. Because we're now getting down to the Y level where there's just loads and loads of lava everywhere. So pausing the machine really has got to be the best option. Look at that. They're all back in position. Not a scratch. And just look at the size of this hole that is being created. Obviously, there's still a little bit of way to go, but it's coming along very well. Since we're now getting to the Y12 area, obviously, there's loads and loads of lava down here. So that's what the, pretty much the main thing I need to get rid of. And I have kind of run out of scaffolding as well. So I'm going to go get more. And also dry off all my sponge. Just realize I have a shulker box full of scaffolding in, in my inter chest. But you know what? I'm also going to grab a bunch of string from the bartering farm, put this massive bamboo farm to good use by crafting plenty of scaffolding. And now I've got two shulker boxes full of scaffolding. And the only thing I need to do now is repair my elytra before I go back. That is mission successful. Now to get back to removing all the lava. And well, what do you know? I found some diamonds in the area as well. Say what? I do not miss this draining out lava. It's, it's such a tedious process. But at least it's a much smaller task than it was in the nether. Turns out this was a massive cave full of lava 
but it's now all gone. Just got this little bit here left to do. Even more diamonds right here. And it's time for the very fun task of mining up this obsidian. I think I have now completely got on top of the lava situation, which means it's time to set these machines off again. And then I can continue removing water and lava. The perimeter is coming along very nicely indeed. And I'm keeping on top of the lava without too much trouble now. You can see the current progress that it's at, so there's still a little bit for it to do, but it shouldn't take very much longer at all. The top half of this perimeter is so, so close to being finished. So I'm now focused on tidying up the blocks on this edge along here because I will need to build flying machines at a lower level. Since the TNT can't quite reach much lower, it really is starting to look incredible. And if this was before 1.18, the perimeter would have more or less been done. But instead, Moyang had to add another 64 layers for me to get rid of, didn't they? Which I won't be doing today because we're not going to have time if I, if I do. We've got a world border to get to. I'll just wait until the machine has destroyed all of these middle bits and then I'll shut off the machines and begin the long, long journey. I'll just get rid of this little bit of extra water. And it looks to me like phase one of the perimeter is now completely finished. There is the odd stray block that's been missed here and there, but getting rid of those won't be a problem. I think my best options now is to turn off the machines by placing redstone blocks. All the machines have stopped. So far, the perimeter's looking pretty epic. I'll be back later to finish the job. And now the next thing I'm going to need is quite a lot of gunpowder. I have quite a lot here, probably enough actually. So before I use all of that, it'll be a good idea to get everything repaired. Now to offload these items. And on a side note, I got loads and loads of diamonds from that. Look at that, over two stacks. I think these diamonds should start living in with the rest of them. So first things first for the preparation. I head to spawn, add a ender pearl to the teleporter and fill a shulker box up with sugar cane. Next, I go to the gunpowder farm and create lots of firework rockets, but not flight duration one, but instead flight duration three ones, which is the max that you can do. With the way I'm doing it, I can only bring a limited amount of resources, which is why the best firework rockets are needed. These will then go into the shulker box and I repeat the process again. Realistically, I'm not going to need all these rockets, but I want to bring extras just in case. I'm happy with the amount I've got in here and in here. I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. Let's empty out the contents of this shulker box. And now to try and remember where I put all the elytra, okay, it was in this chest. I'm also going to require a spare bed, so I'm stealing this one. Let's dye it black just for effect. And this is how things are going to look. This is this is going to be my inventory for the journey. In fact, I'm going to just take out another stack of fire rockets. I've got loads of elytra. I'm not sure if I'm going to really need them all, but once I'm in the air, I can't really leave the air, so I, I need them in my inventory. Most importantly, there are ender chests in here, so I can access all my items. I will need the flint and the obsidian to get off the bedrock roof. There's only one thing now that I'd like to do. I'd like to make a banner. A banner that I can place at the world border to prove that I was there. Although to create one, I'm going to have to actually remember how to make a banner. I'm going to need an oxide daisy. I'm using my precious firework rockets and elytra already. Pretty sure there's got to be some of them. Yeah, there's right here. Perfect. With that, I can, yeah, I can make a flower charge banner pattern. Let's craft the banner. And I need something now that I've apparently never made in my world. A loom. Pretty straightforward to craft. It can go in this room full of the things that nobody ever uses. And we're going to put the banner kind of thing like this. So yeah, we go like that. Next, we go with this one. Then this one. Yeah, it's not quite looking like a penguin just yet, is it? But if I do this... All of a sudden, it, it does kind of look like a penguin. And I just need to sort the beak out now. And then a bit of orange there. And I can tidy up the final bit by doing this. There we go. I have got myself a penguin banner ready for the uh, the world border. I can go in there. Let's make sure we've got all the fire. This is it now, guys. This is this is the final send-off, okay? I don't know where this pattern's gonna go. No more drills. This is it. I'll eat a final pork chop. I think I'm as ready as I'll ever be. But because I am gonna leave my PC on for the next 40 hours because I cannot reload the world once I start the journey, I'm gonna restart my PC right now. Okay, I'm now back. I'm gonna go ahead and try and collide with this place. It's a bit, a bit broken, so if I do something like that, there we go, we teleported. I just want to kind of replace it just to be safe. If I can't get back, I will be uh, I'll be very, very screwed. In fact, it's going dark, so I should probably sleep anyway, so it's going to teleport me when I sleep. There we go. At least we know it's working. We'll place that in there. Once I head through this portal, <laughs> there really is no going back. The mob switch needs to be turned off, and this chunk loader must be switched on. From what I can tell, the chunk loader is working perfectly. And now, as I head down here and get into position, the lag machine will be starting as pigmen go through the portals. The reason I need to build this down in perimeter is if I did it on the bedrock roof, it would just be way, more, way slower. It would take far too long. So this is why I've created a super, super fast one. I'm going to take off my current elytra and put on a brand new pair as well. And I need about 16 stacks of rockets, so I've got all of them. I've got plenty of elytra. I don't think I can be any more ready. I just have to now wait for the game to get laggier and laggier. And in fact, you can probably see that the game is already very laggy. Look at that. I've broken the trap door, and it's probably going to take about four, five, six seconds. I'm going to get it so that it takes about a minute and a half for that trap door to drop, and then I'll know that time is going slow enough for me to make it to the world border in time. But you can already see that the movement's pretty laggy over there. I can't really show you because they'll despawn if I go there, but go on the other side of the portals. The pigmen aren't despawning. They're not having entity cramming because they're climbing on vines, and the chunk loader is keeping them loaded even when I travel, you know, millions of blocks away. So that is why 
they're causing, you know, the, the tick rate to, uh, to to really slow down. And I'll be back in about 30 minutes when things are super, super slow. It's been a while, so I'm once again going to break this and see how long it takes. That took one minute and five seconds. So we're getting there, but there's still a little bit to go yet. One minute 30 is my goal. And now it's time to do the test again. I think this time we might be ready to go. And you can see on the F3 menu that it's still day 2886, even though I restarted my PC 40 minutes ago. So, you know, that should have been a Minecraft day in that time. But because time has been slowed down, this day is going to last for hours and hours. And it took one minute and 50 seconds. All right, time has definitely slowed down enough for us to set off. I'll have my final pork chops, which are going to take forever to eat. In hindsight, I should have done the eating before I slowed down time. It's, it's really taking forever. Are we eating one? Okay, it took about two minutes. The eating has been successful. Now to wait a minute and a half for this shulker box to drop. Let's do it. Okay, this is why I built a ladder here so I could easily get up without having to, you know, fly through a tiny gap. I'm using mini hood to show my coordinates in the top left just so that, you know, the F3 screen can be a little bit big. And we have now made it to the bedrock roof. Now, because time has slowed down, chunks won't really load properly. They'll kind of be a bit slow in loading. And if I try and use a fire rocket whilst loading new chunks, it will it will go wrong. So I need to look directly upwards now. And, and I just need to get going. And there we go. We're flying up now. And look how high it sent me. Okay, so one rocket. Okay, hold on. Let's... Um... <laughs> Well, that didn't work. I just went right back down to one and a half hearts. Take two. Okay. You can see it's a bit laggy to get going, but I'm just going to use a bunch of firework rockets just to get up to speed a little bit. But this firework rocket, once I'm going, will get me uh, get me quite high. So we're at 500 blocks in the air now. Now, I'm going to use another rocket just so I get to Y2000. We're going to see how high this one rocket gets me. Because I've slowed down time, the boost works for so, so much longer. So far, it's got me up 1,000 blocks and it's still no signs of slowing. And it was 1,750-ish, something like that, which means roughly every minute I'm going to release a new rocket. And that's how I'm going to get to the world border with very few resources. You'll notice that we're at 7,700 blocks in the air and my durability has gone down by one of my elytra, so I'm not even going to go through my elytra thanks to this machine. But I've got to get to 410,000 blocks in the air, so if you think I'm going to sit here for the next few hours and, and do that, I'm not. I've got an auto-clicker every minute. That auto-clicker is going to right-click, release a rocket, and I'll just keep checking in on it and making sure that everything is okay. Look at that, guys. We have just surpassed 50,000 blocks in the air. And after traveling those 50,000 blocks, we've literally only used 13 durability. I might even only need one elytra for this entire journey, or, or two or three at most. And I was out of the room whilst it happened, but we have made it to 105,000 blocks. I've just got like 300,000 to go. The elytra durability, look at that, still 400. Absolutely perfect. Let's just keep flying high up into the sky. So I've left it for four or five hours. We are 470,000 blocks up in the air. My elytra have barely broken going all that distance, which is, is pretty crazy. I also don't know what day it is because if you go above the, the build limit, then it doesn't tell you the day on the F3 menu, which is a bit weird. All I know is that I'm high enough to start gliding into brand new chunks and it should all work fine. The chunk loader should stay loaded. So I need to look at about an angle of basically of zero and directly north. And we're gliding. We're going, okay? Because we're so high, we can't load chunks below us because we're, we're miles away. I get my totem back into my offhand. And yeah, this is me now. The beauty of this is that I can go ahead and just leave. Like, I can do other things on my computer now. I don't have to leave the window open, which is good. It's just going to be gliding. I have to keep allowing the light to durability. And it's just, it's just going to be like 30 to 40 hours of, of, of me gliding now. And we've made it to 5,000 blocks. We've just got 3,995,000 to go. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to need another cup of tea. A few more hours have passed and I've made it to 375,000 blocks. I also realized I can change my angle to 25. Because I'm high enough, it'll make me fly much faster and get there. So it's only going to take me about 20 hours now. And I've got enough height so that I won't hit the ground before I get to my destination. It's getting late, so I'm going to leave this running overnight. And I'll keep checking on it through the night to make sure nothing goes wrong. And, uh... Yeah, we'll see how we go. Well, guys, about 18 hours have passed since I first started gliding, and we are at 2.87 million blocks. We've got under a million to go. By my calculations, we've got six hours to go. Then I can make a new portal, and I'll finally be at the world border. Also, as you can see, this elytra has been used for ages, and it's been absolutely fine. I might as well just switch up into a new elytra, and that will probably get me all the way there. So, yeah, I'll leave this flying for a bit, and, uh, yeah, see you at 3,700,000 blocks. Look at this, guys. We have just surpassed 3 million blocks. As well as that, you'll see that I'm kind of in a void. I don't really look like I'm in the nether. But if I go ahead and just pause the game, you'll see that the chunks load. And then I'm like, I'm back. And then I disappear. 
and I'll kind of fly back out of the loaded chunks. That's why it just looks like I'm flying in a snowstorm or something weird. Alrighty, 760,000 blocks to go now. We are now more or less at the place that we need to be. We're about a thousand blocks away, but I'm quite high, so I'm just I'm just gonna start flying directly downwards. Pretty soon I'm gonna hit the ground. I should probably be careful. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's be graceful. You can see it's flickering though, the textures when I move. That's just a sodium bug, so if I save and quit the game, and now when I've reloaded the world, as you can see, the flickering has gone. Now, I'm not quite in the right position. We're on day 2889, by the way. I've, I'm just finding that out. In three Minecraft days, I made it to the world border. That's, that's got to be kind of a world record, even though I, I slowed down time to do it. I've got a pretty exact position that I want to make the portal. And it feels kind of fitting that I would graciously walk the last few blocks. All this running is making me hungry. I kind of forgot what it's like to eat. In fact, I can probably just get all my tools back. I don't need all these fire rockets anymore. You'll also notice that because I reloaded the world, that turned off the trunk loader and the lag machine has been stopped. So I can place things, break them instantly, absolutely no problem. And this right here is the very spot. If I have a place to bed right here, well guys, this is the moment that I end my hardcore series. I'm going to blow myself. Just kidding, guys. All right, I wouldn't do that. You'll have to wait until the 3,000 days episode to know what this bed is going to be used for. It'll be very cool indeed. So you're probably tired of waiting. Let's go ahead and go through the portal and see what is going to be there. At least I wish I could go through, but there's, there's one small problem. I built a teleporter that when you sleep, it teleports you back, which is, which is a good thing. But I believe that if I enter the nether in the day and then come home at night, it might trigger it. I haven't tested it. I don't want to risk it. So I went during the day. I'm going to wait until the day counter goes up one to three, eight, 90, and then I'll go through. That way I don't get teleported back instantly. It would it would just be a disaster. It's now day 2890, so we are going to do the monumental moment and head through the portal. This is it, guys. This is a long time in the making. The world border, the edge of my Minecraft world. I cannot go any further. It blocks you from exploring past this. Look at this. 2999983. I believe if you go a little, you can go a little bit further with pearls, but, but it, like, you know what? Yes, there's a chance that I could die trying this, but let's, let's just do it, okay? Put my chest plate on as well for a bit of extra protection. Life outside the world border, guys. <laughs> so you can go up to 29999, which is it's kind of that way. I don't want to go too far because you can get stuck. I can I can come here. I'm, I'm kind of safe, which is, is good. But yeah, we, we made it to the world border. I should stay on the safe side of the border. We can't pass back through now. Only Ender Pearls will get you through. Here is the banner that will prove that the penguin was indeed there. And it is actually possible to use pistons to make something known as ghost blocks. So if I can grab a little bit of cobblestone and grab some sticks from a dead bush to make a lever. I believe I have all the materials right here to make a piston. There we go, that can be crafted. If I put a piston facing this way and then a lever. So you can't actually push anything through the world border technically. So if I go like this, you'll see like it, it kind of just goes inside and it's, it's super weird. And if I pull it back, like it is there, but it isn't there. Because now if you look, I can... Do something like that. As you can see, there's two blocks in the same place, which is, is super, super weird. I think I can only break the crafting table. Yeah, the, the, the oak one is just is completely is completely glitched. And so by creating some slabs, you can do something very cursed like this. So you can push that one away, and then you can put a slab on top. And look at that. I have got a uh, an illegal slab in Minecraft. It's, it's half and half. Very, very cool indeed. So you can basically do that. Everything, you know, stairs, any funny size shaped blocks and stuff like that. And what about this one? I flick that and then we put an anvil inside of it and it's like, well, part anvil, part slab. You can have some fun with it. It looks a little wacky. But to be honest, guys, there's not too much else to do it. I, like, it's just the achievement of getting here that I'm very impressed with. And this will not be the last time that I manage to come here. Okay, mark my words, guys. All right, you, you'll just have to wait and see how I do that. But the final thing to do is place a bed once we wake up and it turns to day. Yes, we're back back home. So yeah, I've successfully been to the world border and back. And who knows, maybe I'll create a way that I can easily get there in like a couple of minutes. You'll have to wait and see to know how I'm going to do that one. All these electric can be safely stowed in here, probably never to be used again. I expected to use a few more up than uh, than those. These spare firework rockets can be safely stowed in here. And you know what's deserved after a long journey like that? A bit of improvements to the old village. They probably have no idea that I've been gone for so long because technically for them it was only three days. But for me it was uh, it was a bit of a lifetime. So this random bit of ice is, is kind of in the way it should, should probably go. And Something tells me I've, I've blocked some villagers in here for some reason. Uh, any reason? Oh, you're still touch and, and you don't just really deserve to be in there. You know what? Be free, guys. I'm in a good mood. Look at that. What a guy. He just can't leave his work, can he? Since I lost both of my beds on the journey, I make a brand new one and I fancy an orange one. And I can't relax for much longer. I've, I've got work to do. I've got an entire perimeter to finish. I'll start by completely destroying these machines, which is a much faster project than it was to build them. In fact, whilst I'm removing them, I'm actually going to keep this one running so that it can still be breaking like this edge here and just making it wider. Like, I'm at 
might as well just have it whilst I'm doing other stuff. It probably won't get there and back too many times since this is so fast. But as Tesco would say, every little helps. All of them on that side are broken, except for the one that's still in use. And whilst that one is running, I should probably get rid of this obsidian. That's all the obsidian gone, and scaffolding can be used to get rid of this lava. And that should be enough of the lava removed. Now to build the next set of the world eaters. Although before I do that, I should also remember to remove these return pads. And that is mission accomplished. A bit annoying to get all my materials back from that though. And now I can get all of these built. And that's the first one successfully built. And that is the second one done. I think enough has been broken. The lava is starting to get a bit annoying. And we're starting to go into this massive lake here, which we, we really don't want to do. So I shall turn it off and then I'll be able to remove it. The fourth one's done. And the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh is done as well. I don't know what those guys down there think they're doing. Although I'm just going to ignore them and patch up this lava. And now I can get rid of this machine. And then I can rebuild it down here. This one is now done. All that's left to be done is remove this return pad. And then build a bunch of them over here. And all of these return pads are done as well. And as you can see, the sun has now set. I don't have quite time to run the uh, the next part of the world eater. That is the next episode thing. But what an episode it has been. That, ladies and gentlemen, was 2,900 days in hardcore Minecraft.